joined with Ray, and we're going to be talking about all the cool comics that are going to be coming up tomorrow, the 26th. I'm super stoked. You super stoked? I'm always stoked. Yes, excellent. As usual, guys, uh, please leave a comment at the bottom. Tell us what you're really into. You know, let us know how, how you're feeling about the comics that are going to be happening. Uh, Ray, uh, see if we can pop that video up really quick so we can see who's talking to us. Let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know how phones work. Technology, eh? Technology is just baffling. There we go. We're getting there. Maybe. Bear with us. One day. There we are. So let's see. There we go. Uh, come, come on. Professionals. That's us. Excellent. So let's also turn down your volume really quick. I've never done this before. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna, Ray's I'm gonna joining us ignorance. for the first time here. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to start off with a book I've been waiting for for a long time. Doom Patrol's back. This is issue number seven. After the first volume, man, there has been some crazy biz happening in this issue. Uh, so it's really focusing on, a lot on, like, what is Niles Calder doing? Uh, and it's also leading up to the next really big kind of story that's going to be happening. I can't say the actual word because it's a cuss word and we try to do a family show here. So, um, yeah, bear in mind, it's the same kind of craziness that we've been, you know, led to expect from the Doom Patrol. But yeah, it's a... Uh, I saw as you were flipping, this is, a, this is oh, a, I see? Yes, it's a, it's a product that I can't really say the name of. So, if you're a big fan of the really crazy, awesome stuff that Young Animal's been doing, then this is for you. I saw, uh, as you were flipping, there was a Oh Honey panel, which I recognize from Shade. So, yeah. that's, uh, that's pretty cool. I, I like weird, tiny crossover things. Yeah, exactly. Well, what's your next thing? So, my first one for this week is Justice League of America. Uh, if you've been keeping up with this, there's uh, a several storylines going on. There's one with uh, Caitlin trying to overcome her heat sickness mm -hmm. so that she can, you know, live like a normal person or and, whatever. And who's Caitlyn for people that... Oh, Caitlyn is Killer Frost. There we go. I know. I know what people know. Okay. Um, and then also, uh, Ray... Ray? I think? The Ray? No, actually, the Adam is looking for uh, his predecessor, uh, the Adam. Yeah. Uh, and... Ray Palmer. Ray, Ray Palmer. There's so many rays happening. Yes, there are. Because there's also the ray. Yes, the ray. Who ha has a big storyline. Uh, he's bringing a ray of hope unto the people. Uh, the king butcher. He's I can't remember his name. It's the okay. king. The king butcher is uh, going into people's dreams as they have them granted, and ripping that away. And it seems like just killing them with depression, mm. which is always fun and. He's having none of that because it's happening in his hometown, hmm. of course. So he's shutting that down. The Justice League is shutting that down. All the while, the heat sickness is coming uh, coming about. They're trying to solve that business. And we may be finding a little more information on what is happening to the original Adam, Ray Palmer. Goodness. So much happening. My next one is All-Star Batman. This is continuing the storyline about Alfred's past. So, a lot of craziness has been happening this. Uh, a lot of enlightening story arcs about Alfred and what his uh, past was like, where he was kind of like uh, not always the nicest butler on Earth. He was actually kind of a mercenary. So, uh, I've been really digging this, especially Raphael Albuquerque's art. It is fantastic in this. And uh, it's kind of leading up to this next... This is kind of like a, just leading up to the next issue, which uh, somebody gets revealed. Ooh. Yes. Uh, there's also a cool little backstory that I'm always... Uh, I'm a really big fan of the All-Star Batman series because it's kind of two, two books in one because you get this really cool little story happening afterwards, everything. So, it's Scott Snyder doing Batman. You love it. Cool. So my next one for this week is Teen Titans. We're on the Blood of the Manta storyline because Aqualad has the Blood of the Manta. Mm -hmm. He really is the Black Manta's son. Uh, but his mother is also Atlantean. So it's um, an Atlantean and Black Manta, and he's trying to get uh, his son so that he can drag him on this weird adventure that he needs his blood for, which is always a promising fatherly adventure. Uh, the Teen Titans have been tasked by his mom to save him. Hmm. And they're going to try to save their pal. Unless you're Damien, in which case you're going to try to save that guy you know. Yeah. 
One thing, uh, I don't think Black Mana gets a lot of respect for his yeah. total villainy, because he is like, he's a mean, oh, mean yeah. dude. He's taken over the ocean, and he is just, everyone thinks he just wants to kill Aquaman, and that's his main story, but he has, you know, other stuff he wants to kill and take over. Yeah, it's, he's a great villain. My next one, Redneck number four. Man, if you were following this book, you're doing a great job. If you're not following this book, we have all the issues here. You need to be reading this. Uh, written by a friend of the store, Donnie Cates. Man, uh, this is just such a great book. Uh, vampires who own a barbecue shop. This is actually kind of an origin story for one of the main, um, main characters. And it's told through the eyes of the littlest vampire who's also a psychic. So she's seeing all of this crazy biz and how he got to be a vampire. Uh, Mean-spirited is a really great way to put this book, but uh, it it's, gets pretty rough sometimes. And uh, uh-oh, maybe uh, a villain that we thought was taken care of maybe isn't, oh, and no. maybe is. I still contend that Grandpa in this series is probably the creepiest figure I've seen in a comic book in a long time. This is an amazingly good story. Read it. That book always makes me think of my hometown. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It makes uh, me think of my hometown, too. I think it's a Texas thing, maybe. Yeah, it's a Texas thing. So my next one, um, Batman Detective Comics. James Tinian is one of my favorite writers. Yeah. And he's on this book, and I can't not love it. Um, Azriel is having a, a time right now. The, a time. Uh, the, the Order of St. Dumas is back. They're infiltrating his head once more, his head and his armor and, you know, all that stuff. Um... The um, the drones that were in effect in an earlier storyline seem to be coming back. Oh. Um, and we're learning more about Zatanna and Batman's relationship in the past when they were teenagers, Ooh. when it seems like they may have been flirty. Mm. Um, but I'm really excited about this. They're doing something really cool with um, Jim Gordon's old armor. Okay. Uh, Batwing is a pretty cool inventor and he's made friends with some armor AI. Nice. Like you do when you're an inventor. Uh, John Molina says, nice Overwatch hat. Thanks. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things in the world. Yeah. Okay. Secret Empire number seven. I'm not going to say anything except for something very huge happens in this. It's not... Okay. Uh, it, something huge happens. Uh, I've been really digging this story. It's really good. Nick Spencer has been weaving this tale for a long time, and there's a lot of things paying off in this issue, but there's also it's just still building, it's still a pressure cooker. Pressure cooker the entire time. So it's One of those issues that punches you right in the chest? Yeah, yeah. there's nice. some stuff in here that I was just like, wow, they did that. So, uh, that's all I'm gonna say! Because you need to read this and find out exactly what it is. I've been really, one thing that usually throws me off a lot about some books is they switch artists around, uh. but I'm actually digging what they're doing in this because they've been switching the artists every couple of issues and it kind of reflects the mood of each single issue. So I, I think that's working in their favor. Sometimes it really bothers me, sometimes, like this time, I think it's great. I think that using art to convey uh, a certain setting or tonal change is a good idea if, if you're going to be switching artists. If you're just switching artists to switch artists, it's maybe not the best decision, but that wouldn't, that's a really good idea to, to use it for uh, part of the storytelling. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, Wonder Woman this week. I've been really, really enjoying this one. Um, Greg Rook is not on Wonder Woman anymore. It is now Fontana. Um, she is at some kind of party. Oh. And there is uh, some kind of explosion. Oh. And then there's some kind of injury Man. to some kind of friend. <laughs> and she gets into a big fight um, with a woman who has stolen her powers and put them to her own use. So they're not gone from Diana, but someone else is using her powers. So she's fighting against... Um, a woman that has the same strength and agility and know-how, but, you know, she's she's not Wonder Woman. Okay. She, she can take care of it, don't worry. Some sort of Wonder Woman. Some sort of Wonder Woman. 
My next one is Steve Rogers, Captain America number 19. You kind of have to read this in the Sam Wilson Captain America, which is also coming out tomorrow. You kind of have to read these before you read Secret Empire number 7, uh, because it, it's backstory. It's much needed backstory for what's happening here. Man, this is Steve kind of sitting around. He's kind of remembering some things. He's also, he has a pretty interesting talk with Odin's son, Thor Odin's son. Uh, and uh, discussing about the hammer and you know because if you haven't been reading Steve Rogers has left the hammer just in the middle of this park saying hey if anybody thinks that they are you know worthy to pick it up pick it up let's see what happens we'll just leave it there yeah it's uh, probably safe it's not gonna go anywhere but this is very much a good backstory to issue seven so pick this one up pick up the Sam Wilson cap because both cap books have been really great uh, just throwing that out there uh, I've been really digging it. And uh, once again, friend of our store, uh, Donnie Cates, is helping writing this issue. He's everywhere now. He is. It's great. Yeah. Because he's I'm great. very happy for him. Uh, X-Men Blue comes out this week. If you're a fan of Emma Frost, she certainly is here. <laughs> and she's being... May I? She's, she's super in love with Cyclops, and that will never stop. And even if he's gone, she'll find another one. It's okay. There's more... There's more, um, there's more, there's more Cyclops. Uh, meanwhile, the the boys, the other boys, are all captured and being held apart. Cyclops is on his own because he's got to get that lady. Um, Jean Grey and Little Wolverine. That's a good way to call. <laughs> Little Wolverine. They're they're trying to get these boys back, and they get a ship that they're pretty sure is being controlled by Magneto, but. Who you knows? know, maybe it's a uh, maybe it's another character that we haven't seen in some time. I have, I'm pretty excited. I have for. a theory about that, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. That's a good idea. They can find out. You guys know I love the series Black Hammer. This is number eleven. Uh, this kind of focuses a little bit about Golden Gale and Barbar Barbalian, uh, as you can tell by the cover. So last issue, Barbalian kind of professes love to somebody. It was not reciprocated. Uh, and poor Golden Gale, this alcoholic, chain-smoking nine-year-old, uh, she ain't having a great time. So, it, this is such a great series. It's all these old superhero tropes that are made new again. I still contend it's very Twilight zone -y. You know, you wake up somewhere, you can't leave, but everybody seems to be very happy. It's, it's got an era, of, uh, an air of creepiness around it. So, very much, very much enjoy this series. Jeff Lemire, you're killing it. Keep it up. Everyone is usually excited for Saga. Um, Brian K. Vaughn's writing is amazing. Fiona Staples' art is I always on point. I believe he won a couple point. of Eisners uh, last week. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. I believe so. Um, so this one, uh, Petrichor is going to have a face down with some a fa horse. A face down? A face down. You mean it like a face off? Or a, a stare down? Listen. I, I'm just listening. Uh, you... Continue, Ray. All right, so she's gonna have a face-off with some horse people and a cowboy. Uh, while Elena tries to figure out who this ghost child is, mm -hmm. uh, maybe has something to do with the mag magic that she's been uh, recreating, and we're finding out a little bit more about all of the abortions that are going on on this planet, because they aren't as benign as they seem. Mm. Even though, you know, getting a miscarried child taken out is pretty benign in general. Right on. It's pretty benign. Okay. I, I don't know. I haven't read it yet. So, I'm going to be reading it tonight. My next one, I was really surprised by the first issue. This is Crosswind number two, uh, written by Gail Simone. Very awesome book. So, if you don't know what this is about, a hitman and a housewife had a, have a Freaky Friday moment and kind of switch minds. And right at probably the worst moment for both of them. Uh, the, Naturally. The very sweet housewife who's very put upon. She wa uh, she just wakes up in a room in a man's body uh, with a dead body in a bathtub and doesn't know what to do. And then the hitman <laughs> wakes up in a housewife's body and she, he has to prepare dinner. So parts of it are really funny. Parts of it are really mean-spirited. But this is, like, really good. I'm very impressed with Gail Simone's uh, story arc here for... Kind of a, you know, story that's been told many times, but it's a fresh look at it. So, I dig it a lot. And the artwork's been really cool in it, too. It's a, kind of like almost a photo surrealism. So, I'm always a fan of a good body swap story. It, the artwork's actually kind of like rotoscoping. Are you familiar with rotoscoping? Yeah, yeah it's very rotoscope. That so. one Keanu Reeves book. 
Oh, you mean um, A Scanner Darkly? Yep. By Philip yeah. K. Dick? Yeah. That one. What's uh, the next one? Nom Wolf, which is the first uh, book I ever read from Fabian Rangel Jr., mm -hmm. whom I love now. He's doing Thanks, great stuff. Nom Wolf. Yeah. Uh, Nom Wolf is. He's got another face off. He thought he had defeated his nemesis. He got a new nemesis. He has to defeat that one too. Um, as as the old adage goes, war is hell, and he's going through it. Mm. This is, in fact, the final issue, though. So if if you are not on board, it's time to get on board. It's so good. Uh, it's it's serious and violent and a little bit silly. Yes. Which is kind of my kind of my thing. Uh, oh, Angela. Hey, man. What's up? How's I was, going? I was, uh, I was wondering if you were going to be joining us this time. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for, you know, jumping on. My next one, the Amazing Punisher series, this is issue number fourteen. This is kind of a standalone story, like the last issue. Uh, I kind of like the one and done stories for Punisher. You know, like a good story arc works sometimes, but sometimes just a good like this is a story. So the whole premise of this is there's a blackout in New York City, and man, uh, Frank ain't happy about it. <laughs> Mostly because he tries to buy a hot dog, the power goes out, and then he has to give it away because he has to like stop all these crimes happening. And you don't get between Frank Castle and his dinner. So I'm a huge fan of it. Becky Clonan's been killing it in this book. No pun intended. Hey. So it's really good one-off story. Ugh, man. Frank Castle does not screw around in this one. There's a very graphic. Um, when have you ever known panel. Frank Castle to screw around? Uh, when he became Franken Castle during Remender's run. That's a fair do you, argument. Do you, do, you, do you know I, about Franken Castle? I do now. Franken Castle. I just is, learned. It was a thing. Um, yeah. It's one of those things that certainly did happen. Yeah, it happened. Like Cap Wolf. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, then, like, man, there's a lot of. <laughs> hey, whoa. Leave Cap Wolf out of this. <laughs> Cap Wolf is great. Take you a minute. <laughs> I love Cap Wolf, and I will forever love Cap Wolf. Naturally. Anyways. Uh, my next one is Lumberjanes. This is the final in the story arc about Parents' Day, which oh, yeah. is a great story arc. You get a little bit of backstory on everybody, and I always like to see more characters in one character's life. So you're learning more about everyone. We're learning more about the situation with the fox and the bear woman. Uh, and what happened in their past. And we get to learn a little bit more about Molly in this issue. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of Molly. Mm -hmm. She's very similar to me. Um, and we get to we get to see a whole new plot coming around because they do a good job of tying their plots all together. Yeah. I, I still think that's one of the better ongoing series. I can't believe it's on issue 40. Already. I really, really enjoy it. It's like they're, they're, doing, they're doing great things. And uh, actually, I just noticed that I think that this is the same writer as one of my favorite books from 2016, Limbo. Oh. I'm gonna go research that as soon as we're not Limbo was a great doing book. other stuff. Okay, I'm getting on to trades now and hardcovers. Uh, I have some ways to go. <laughs> Serenity. This is actually volume four, I believe. Wait, no. One, two. I think it's volume five. I think it's five. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I've been reading them in single issues, so I kind of forget. So this takes place after the movie. So uh, there's brown coats. They're starting to come back. They need a figurehead, though, and who better than Malcolm Reynolds? But also a really cool plot in this story is what happened to all the other kids that was in the uh, facility with River. So if you're a if you're a fan of anything Joss Whedon does, this series actually is very true to his previous works. So yeah, I mean. I'm still sad that, yeah, and it's been years, I know this, I'm still sad that Serenity is not around and Firefly isn't around anymore, but the comics are pretty darn great, and I'll take it. Like, if you're going to continue a Joss Whedon series in any format, comics do it in comics. Yeah. He was a comic writer. He was a comic guy. Because you don't need a big budget for it. No, you do not. Yeah, but this is really great. I've been loving it. Dark Horse has been doing a great job with this, so... My next single issue is the Steven Universe issue. Um, this one is <laughs> Pearl learning to wrestle. All of the Steven Universe issues have been single one-offs. So if you haven't read any of the previous issues, but you know Steven Universe, you can pick any of these up anytime you see them. But if you like Steven Universe, and or you like wrestling, mm -hmm. please, it's so cute. It's so funny, and I'm so happy. <laughs> It's very cute. 
My next one is, and bear with me because I think this is awesome, is called The Black Sinister. If you haven't heard about this, basically, it's what if Batman was working a little too hard? Especially, like, jaywalkers. You know, of course, end of the world threats and everything, but, like, he'll every single crime he treats equally. So, you know, jaywalkers get the same trouble as, you know, Joker level. That's thing. absolutely where Damian so, Wayne is headed. So, what would happen with the city that he lives in? It's called Coal City. Uh, and what if they got really tired of him? How would you get rid of your vigilante that has been protecting the night for you? Oh, no. Uh, it's written by... I'm still trying to figure out how to say his name. Kerr Andrews? Kari Andrews? Uh, who's been doing, you know, Renato Jones, did Iron Fist a little bit ago. Oh. Uh, it's illustrated by a guy who's been doing a lot of the uh, BPRD series. I really can't wait to, like, really dig through this. I got to flip through it a whole lot, but I didn't really get to read the entire thing, obviously. So, yeah, I'm pretty stoked about this. This looks really cool. It's my kind of, like, dark superhero book. Into it. Uh, Go Go Power Rangers comes out tomorrow. Go Go? Go Go. Power Rangers. Power Rangers a go-go. <laughs> if you have read the other series, this is a great prequel. If you have not read the other series, go for it. I'm very excited about it. I watched the Power Rangers movie pretty recently, so I've been on kind I, of a cow Power Rangers kick. I saw the Power Rangers movie in the theaters. Yeah, well, I, I for free. am terrible about going to movies. Oh, yeah. Um, they're, they're coming into themselves. They've just gotten their powers. This takes place right after their first morph. And they're becoming a team, they've just defeated their first enemy, and they're kind of living their lives like, what do we do now that we've defeated our first supervillain? Because there's going to be no more, right? Yeah, this is it for of course. us. They're wrong. That's how Power Rangers They're work. wrong. Absolutely. Nice. This one I am also very uh, excited about, and I just found out about it today. This is called... Solid State. It's by Jonathan Colton, who's been a musician for a lot of different things. He's on NPR. He did the um, music for Code Monkeys. He has a lot of albums out. It's also written by Matt Fraction as well. And uh, the artwork is by, I'm sorry, Spanish artist. Uh, how do you say his name? Montes? Montes. Yeah. So, Albert Montes. So this is kind of hard to explain. It's about two guys that are connected by a name and a couple of hundred years. It's about the end of the beginning of humanity and the beginning of the end humanity. It's one of those, it's a thinker, it's a thinker. And uh, the artwork's really cool. It's just this guy trying to figure oh. out how he's fitting in in this grand cosmic opera, I guess. Yeah, I, I'll, I'm going to stick with opera. I'm into that. Yeah, I'm really stoked about this. Once again, I didn't get to read all of it because, you know, we have so much to go through. Just seeing you flip through it, the art looks really cool. Yeah, the cool. artwork's really cool. I really dig what they're doing here, so uh, I'll be reading this tonight as well. Yeah. So, our Valiant guy, Patrick, has been keeping the hype alive for me on Faith in the Future Force because every time a piece of new promo work comes out for this, he tags me in it on Twitter and he points out Faith, and he points out War Mother. War Mother's not in this issue, but yeah. I'm not disappointed, because it, it seems like they're just doing that uh, time paradox thing where they play with it instead of say, oh no, there's a time paradox! They say, okay, well, let's, let's just go back to five minutes before everything went wrong and see if we can fix it, maybe? Who knows? It, Who it knows? can't go worse than it just did yeah so faith is going forward in time it looks like she's gonna s try and stop the events that took uh 4001 ad to where it was or mm -hmm. maybe she's traveling to that moment but oh, yeah. faith being in charge of a team that's yeah. it that's it for me this is this is top quality valiant for me this does look cool it looks really cool well 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 Okay, so I'm still talking about uh, my books and stuff, but this is going to be leading into all the big events that we have coming up this week. So one thing I've been looking forward to, by Chance or Providence, by Becky Cloonan. She's going to be here tomorrow from 4 to 7 signing this. Uh, she's also doing Punisher, as I said earlier. She's doing Gotham Academy, she, uh, Southern Cross, which just came out last week. Uh, she's going to be signing a lot of stuff. Very cool lady. If you haven't met her, she's really awesome. So, 
the pretty much the plot of this. It's a it's a trilogy actually. Uh, the wolves. I'm sorry, wolves. The Meyer and Demeter. Best way I can describe this is kind of like melancholy horror, uh, but it's like about you know like medieval times and curses and all this stuff. That's got some Greek stuff in it, and I'm into it. Yeah, this has been. I've been waiting for this for a long time because it's kind of hard to get the original like you know trilogy. So it's finally being collected. Thank you very much, Image. So please come by tomorrow. Come say hi to Becky. Come say hi to. She is me so and Ray. sweet. Yeah, and so we're really stoked about having her here. So once again, tomorrow, four to seven. That's the twenty sixth. New comic day. Kaboom. She also does the art and writes it as well, which I think is very impressive. So no one's going to be here signing this, but it's been w awaited. Uh, the internet has been blowing up about it. My timeline on Twitter has been talking about it for some time now. There's a lot of really cool stuff going on with Korra and Sami in here, but if you don't know what I'm talking about, The Legend of Korra was the follow-up to Avatar The Last Airbender, and this is the follow-up to Legend of Korra. Avatar The Last Airbender was my favorite cartoon. It still probably is my favorite cartoon. And Legend of Korra was a great follow to it. Mm -hmm. um, they're doing a, a pretty cool looking comic. I'm really excited for it. They did a great job with the Avatar comics, so I think they'll do a great job with these too. Uh, it's a fun all ages book. And I'm just... Very happy. I'm, I'm, I'm happy, Ty. Good, I'm, very, I'm happy that you're happy. Did I say we had events going on? Oh man, do we have yeah. events happening? Because we're also on Saturday having Jim Rugg come in. He's gonna be signing from four to six. Uh, he's gonna be signing this book, The Street Angel Gang. If you're not familiar with Street Angel, she's a 12 year old homeless girl who is also a ninja that skateboards and eats everybody's food and beats everybody up. Uh, if you're a fan of Scott Pilgrim, it's that kind of book. If you're a fan of just solid beat em ups, that's this book as well. So this, uh, the whole premise of this volume of Street Angel is she joins a gang, hence Street Angel <laughs> Gang. Uh, yeah, like you do. I'm not the best at setup sometimes. Uh, but you know, if she finally found the family that she's looking for, maybe, maybe not, who knows? But I do know that there's gonna be some butt kicking happening in this. So Jim Rugg is gonna be here four to six, Saturday the 29th. It's gonna be an awesome time. We're very excited about having him here. I'm very stoked about it. So, I'm pretty excited to meet him. He's going to be signing uh, all of his books, Street Angel, Aphrodisiac, uh, Plane Chains. Uh, I love Chains Plane love. Chains. Uh, the Guild, if you remember The Guild. He did the art for that as well. So I am really stoked about him coming by, and this is coming out tomorrow as well. Fun fact, The Guild Volume 2 had a Becky Cloonan story in it. What? And The Guild Volume 1 it's has Jim Rugg art. It's all connected. It's all connected. What's your next one? Uh, my, my last trade for this week is this, volume 13 of Haikyuu. This is for you, Kachi. <laughs> she, she's, she's gonna watch it. Yeah. Uh, because she's gonna know in her heart that this is happening. Um, Haikyuu is up to volume 13, but it is never too late to get into a good manga or a good anime, either way. But if you get into one, you should probably just go ahead and get into the other. And we do have, I believe, all of the volumes leading up to this one. I know we have volume one if you're not into it, if you're not caught up. I know we have at least three or four volumes ahead behind this one, but they are um, in their spring tournament with... Well, first, give give a description about what this is about. Volleyball boys. There we go. They are playing volleyball. They are the underdog team. Uh, Karasuno is the underdog team that used to be really, really amazing, but they've gotten kind of down on themselves in the past few years because they just don't have the coaching that they had before but then some new freshmen come in and just start tearing it up they're really really great and everything's starting to come together nice and they're getting it together cool they're doing it ty they're, they're doing, doing it. it okay so i'm gonna start talking about some merch which i'm very <laughs> i'm kind of tickled by i actually kind of want this but i don't think my wife would let me get it hang on oh my goodness so if you're like me, you grew up watching the Batman 66 TV show, and you always wanted this in your house because somehow there was a bat cave hiding somewhere. This is actually a piggy bank. What? But it's this giant, and the thing that I like about it is you can actually lift up the head and turn the knob. So, okay, yeah, I can be five years old for five minutes here. But I'm this, really excited about this too. I'm really stoked about this. This is so cool. It's just this giant, uh, let me get it closer here to you. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, to the bat poles. This is great. Here we go. Yeah, this is awesome. I'm very happy about this. It might be coming home with me. What's your next thing? Mine is less uh, all-encompassing. I have a timepiece for a wonderful movie that has just come out a little while ago. Brennan, can you tap the screen, make it focus a little bit? We're out of focus at the moment. No one's going to be able to see this watch. Yeah, there we go. Excellent. Thank you, buddy. No problem. So uh, this is the the newest in the DC logo watches, uh, Wonder Woman, but it's the movie Wonder Woman. So you've got this very elaborate, intricate, beautiful gold insetting and a really nice leather looking uh, band that looks kind of similar to some of the leather that she wears. Mm -hmm. This is probably my favorite one so far of the DC watches that they've come out with. It looks pretty cool. I would wear it if I had the capacity to wear something without breaking it. You are, you are clumsy. I'm real clumsy. I almost knocked the book over on camera. Can, can you do the Wonder Woman theme music for us, Renee? Nope. The iconic? Nope. No? No. no. This, this show has have... no music. No music? You could have asked whenever we had the, the Batman one and you didn't, so you missed your chance. Missed the chance, you know Brennan. The, uh, well, the Batman, I mean, everyone knows that. It's over now. <laughs> and Brennan is mad at us. <laughs> okay, so as usual, my last thing is going to be the Psychic Special of the Week. This one, we're going to switch it up a little bit. We're actually going to get a little literary. Mm. And this is when Marvel was doing a lot of different kind of adaptations of Jane Austen novels, as well as, you know, a lot of like 18th century, no, 19th century novels. Whenever they were doing I was, that. I always get it very confused. Uh, so this is about Emma. Now, I'm not going to lie. I never read Emma. I read Sense and Sensibility, the comic that we have at Sidekick, but I have not read Emma, so it's time for me to do that. So uh, this is going to be, it's usually $19.99, we're doing it for five bones. So you know, let's, uh, let's culturally enhance ourselves a little bit, You know what's but even still cooler? read comics. If you come to Sidekick tomorrow to pick this book up, you'll be there. You'll get to see me, yeah. and I'm great, so you should do that. So this is for five dollars. Tomorrow, uh, Sidekick's open, nine to eight tomorrow. It's gonna be great. So let's talk about all this stuff that is going on. Um, art show on Friday. I'm really excited. Yeah, it's Strange Beast 5, Shin Beasts, which is giant kaiju monster art. We're gonna be having a food truck come by, which I'm pretty stoked about. Uh, there's gonna be some uh, beverages, some music, uh, some really awesome art. This is like the, the Strange Beast shows are usually our biggest ones, so we're very excited about this. There's also gonna be a professional Godzilla cosplayer. Yes. Which I am really hyped about. Yeah. Because I love Godzilla, and you know I'm going to take a picture with him. Oh, yeah. Because I love him. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be sticking around just a little bit for that, too, as well. I, I have to. I can't wait to see Matt Frank's face. Oh, yeah, Matt Frank. I can't wait either. <laughs> so that is going to be from 7 to 10 on Friday, the 28th. Uh, do you have anything going on? Uh, not this week. What's but... next week? Uh, I don't think it's next week. It's the uh, second week of August will be Ladies Book Club. Okay. We're meeting again. We're going to talk about uh, DC bombshells. Okay. So any lady types are uh, more than welcome to come. We're going to be meeting from 6.30 to 7.30 over at Outlaw, second Thursday of August. And um, I, think that's, I think that's all that I have immediately coming up. Right on. Uh, we also, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to reiterate the signings in just a second. Uh, we have a book club going on right now. The last Tuesday of every month, we have just the regular Austin Books book club. This time, they're doing Gotham Central. What are they doing next time? Uh, you know? Next Wave Agents of Hate. Oh, excellent. That is one of my favorite books ever. It's like one of my top ten books. You know, you know we made that happen, though. Yes. Yeah. Go team. Go team. So, Actually, oh, I'm sorry. we did just make a Austin Books and Comics book clubs page for Facebook, nice. which I'm going to link soon when I figure out how to link those two if I can. We'll, I'm not good at Facebook. We'll figure it out. But it's if you want to be more involved in our book clubs, if you're interested in all of our different types of book clubs, we have an LGBT book club, all ages is starting in September. Yep. We've got a ladies book club and the the regular book club that just encompasses all different types of things. You can find all of those there. The events are going up. 
all of it's getting organized and consolidated into one place where all the book clubs can come together and nice. hang out. Good. Little organization. So uh, let me just reiterate uh, all the things that are happening this week. So tomorrow, Wednesday, 26, 4 to 7, Becky Clonan, by chance or providence. That's the name of the book, not by circumstance if she'll be here. Uh, we also have on this Friday, the 28th, Shin Beast, uh, you know, Strange Beast number five. It's going to be an awesome art show. That is Friday from 7 to 10. And then on Saturday, we have the Street Angel signing with Jim Rugg. That's going to be from Saturday from 4 to 6. And then afterwards, we're having a little shindig. If you guys want to join that as well, that shindig is going to be from 7 to 10. So uh, I guess that's pretty much it. It is a week of events. Yeah, it's, uh, we've been building up to this for a while. And also, we're still building up to our 40th anniversary sale. And uh, it's going to be intense is the best way I could put it. So uh, you can follow me at Super Ty Denton one You can follow you at? Dragonosaurus. Excellent. And you can follow both of us at Austin Books. We'll be seeing you tomorrow. Okay. Occupy the camera while I go turn it off. Da 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 da. Ah. Da 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 da. Da 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 da.